Y'all are going to stay single. Y'all have got to get some act right. Pull it together while you're still young. Goodness gracious. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Bella's Corner, where the truth is delivered with love. Thank you so much for joining me. I greatly appreciate it. If you're new, welcome. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any of my new uploads or when I go live. And ladies, always remember to keep it classy and never trashy. I'm Femininity Coach Bella. Let's go ahead and get into it. So today, everyone, I have a clip or a subsection of the Balloon Pop Challenge dating show. This one actually came up on my Facebook page and I went ahead and wanted to share this one because this is going to show you a very good example of how even the quote, perfect man isn't good enough and women will reject him even when he's literally standing in front of their faces. And I think it's very interesting because I've watched uh, in, in my time with being in the femininity space, dating and things of that nature, I have seen many women profess that they want a man who's fit, who takes care of himself, you know, has some form of income. Uh, typically, they want to be romance. And even they always say they want a man of God. Now, let me say this and then we're going to get into the, the clip. I get it. Not everyone is going to have the same faith. I understand that. However, even when that man is standing in, again in front of their face, they realize that, hmm, maybe this isn't what I want or I don't want that kind of man of God. What does that even mean, ladies? Because here's my thing. When you present yourself before a man, maybe you're shorter than his preference, maybe taller. Maybe you, you wear your hair a certain way that he doesn't necessarily like 100%, but he'll deal with it because you keep yourself up, you still look nice or whatever the man's preference is. But my point is none of us are perfect, but it seems like ladies, they are sickeningly picky and their pickiness is really is what is going to, in the long run, result to them being single, being single, feeling like they're quote settling um, and consider how picky they are is going to lead them to a lifetime of discontent, of lack of joy, a lack of happiness and feeling and being unfulfilled. And it's honestly really sad to see. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into it so you can see what I'm talking about. So my name is Jairus Williams. Jars? Jars Williams. Okay. And how old are you? I'm 26. 26. And what do you do? So I'm a Marine vet and I'm a Christian recording artist. I sing. Thank you for your service. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, what are some things I can do for fun? Uh, I love the water. I'm a water baby. So, okay. uh, you know, I was, um, I'm the only home birth out of uh, all eight children. Wow. So um, I love the water because I was born in the water. So okay. I'm a little fishy, you know, <laughs> I'm a little, you know what I mean? Okay. So. And now uh, what are some things you look for in a woman? Um, she got to be God-fearing for sure. Um, and she got to be kind. Mm -hmm. She got to be gentle. She got to be loving. And uh, she also got to support her man okay. in everything that he do. Just like I'm going to support you in everything that you do. God-fearing. He wants a woman who's God-fearing, kind, gentle, and supportive. That sounds like he wants a feminine woman to me. A woman who puts God above everything, who puts God as the head of her life and everything else follows. I think those are reasonable expectations from a man who's God-fearing himself. From a man who so far seems to be quite confident He's a military vet. Shout out to the veterans. Thank you so much for your service. And he's currently pursuing his dream and his passion. And he's doing it for God, which is definitely commendable, which is definitely respectful. And again, he seems very, very confident from the time he stepped into the room. So let's keep watching. Got it. Now, what are some of your deal breakers? Um, somebody who's not willing um, to listen, willing to learn, um, willing to grow in their relationship with God. I understand that some people may not know who God is or never have an experience with God. But if you're willing, like God expects us to be, I can rock with that. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So we, we did get a, a pop balloon. That's all right. Let's head on over there and see why she ended up popping. Hello. If we can start off with your name and age. My name is Jasmine. I'm 24. Okay. And Jasmine, why did you end up popping your balloon? Um, I think you're very handsome, sure. you know, but it's just not really my answer. I never understand why before the man even receives any sort of criticism 
two, three, four more women start to pop their balloon. Were they on the edge about this person? When they saw the sound of his face, did they decide they weren't interested? Like, what's the reason? But you're very handsome. Okay. And I love the words you spoke. So yeah. Okay. And so what makes him not really your type? Um, I... Well, I think he's really handsome. I just think that, you Thank know, you. yeah, of course. Um, and he spoke beautiful words. And I love that, you know, but just not really my, um, I think maybe the girl, maybe that. Oh, I'm from Texas. So that's how we get down. So. Uh, it's nice though. Oh, I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and now she's someone that's your type? Um, she's very beautiful. Um, I don't really do a whole lot of approaching. Okay. So um, not that I'm against it or anything like that, but she's definitely so like very, very beautiful. So absolutely. Thank you. Let's go to our next lady. Your name and age and why you ended up popping your balloon. Um, my name is Alexis. I'm 24. Hello. And um, I call my balloon because like my sister said, you're very handsome. You're, you know, very well put together. Thank you for your service, by the way. Well, thank you. I appreciate you. Uh -huh. um, it's just not, like, you're not bad looking. I'm just not, like, attractive. Okay. That's fine. I actually like the girls here, by the way. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> That's okay. All right. I know you said you don't do a lot of approaching, mm -hmm. and they are sisters, so you said you. Like, oh, yeah. We definitely don't do that. I'm a man of God, so. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I didn't say you approach them both. Oh. I'm mean, saying, like, they're twins. Oh, okay. Okay. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so I know you said she was, you know, she was really cool, all that Absolutely. stuff. So she's someone that you like as well? Uh, yes. Okay. Just wouldn't approach. Okay. Thank you. Let's go to our next lady here. Your name and age. Alaya, and I'm 25. Right. And Hello. Alaya, why'd you end up popping your balloon? It's the water thing. I have a fear of the water. I can't swim to save my life, so that wouldn't be a good match for me. I can't swim either, so. <laughs> yeah. I'm being honest. But you love the water? I, I got a life jacket. Okay. I'll stay with him. So I got one for you, too. Uh, I mean, well, I had one for you. So. Okay. Okay. It was bad. He's charming. She said, oh, I can't do the water. I'm scared. Ladies, let's stop eliminating wanting to be to possibly get to know an individual because they do something that you fear or do something you've never done. This individual could be the catalyst toward you getting over your fear, toward you conquering this fear. So just off the bat, eliminating your potential uh, spouse, your potential future, again, off of something that you fear. Now I get it, I understand. Fear is crippling. But the thing is with him, he said, well, I can't swim either, but I got a life jacket on and I got one for you too. That means he's patient. I'm sensing, I'm getting patience and I'm getting humor from him. Don't the ladies want someone who can make them laugh as well? Like, come on. So ladies, we have to do better with that because you at least have a conversation about where he's at with you about your fear. And again, perhaps he can help be a catalyst toward you getting over it. Let's keep going. Fair. Yeah, but it was the water thing. It was, I thought that was like a big thing for you. It was like in your lifestyle and I didn't want to be, you know, intruding on that. So oh, I appreciate that. that. Mm -hmm. cool. Okay. I mean, he said he can't swim. He got a life jacket for you. I don't know, but it seems like he want to do a lot of water activities and I, you know, <laughs> I don't think I can do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So she's someone that's your type? Um, yes, yeah, she's very beautiful. I still wouldn't approach. Okay. I'm very particular. Okay. Thank you. Let's go over here. Your name and age. I'm Asia. I'm 25. How you doing? And Asia, why'd you end up popping your balloon? Um, no particular reason. It's just, um, but like, not really my type. Okay. I love that what you were saying about the Lord, though, for sure. For sure. Same with that. Yeah. What kind of makes it not really your type? A little taller. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that's all right. We yeah. hear that sometimes. Exactly. You know, we can't change our height, so yeah. it's all good. Okay. You know? How tall are you? Uh, I'm 5'10". Mm. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Now, I get it because my husband's tall. I get it. But here's the thing. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I was programmed to want and prefer a tall man. A man who is six feet and over. I promise you. I'm like, I love my mom. I love her. She taught me well. But I was programmed to prefer that. But baby, let me tell you something. The height of a man does not dictate his masculinity, how kind he is, how he can provide for you, and how he can make you feel emotionally and even your body. Do you understand me? I get it. You may want someone who's taller than you or whatever the case is, but please stop literally measuring a man by his height. Height is not equal to being a man. Age does, character does, masculinity does. If he can keep you in order, keep the home in order, his protection, that is what measures a man, not something that he can't change. Because I guarantee, I'm not harping on y'all, but hear me out. Women do not want to be negatively judged or don't want to be assumed to have less femininity by her weight. And that's it. The more pounds you have on you, if you're deemed to be, say, obese, fluffy, the more weight you have on you, the more weight you carry on you, you're deemed to be less feminine. If you're 50 pounds overweight, you've lost 
50 points off of your femininity score rather than your heart being assessed rather your character being considered right so ladies i urge you to check your programming and to step out of what society tells you your mama sister auntie have convinced you is the quote better man due to his height it's all right. <laughs> and now she's someone that's your type um she's very attractive uh still would not approach because i'm very particular i know what i'm looking for Right. Thank you. So let's go on over here. Your name and age? Princess. I'm 23. Okay. And Princess, Hello. Princess, why did you end up popping your balloon? Um, I would say at first it was the whole cowboy thing, but I was like, you know, that's not. But then the more I thought about it, I'm more so spiritual. I've been trying to figure out how I feel about religion. You know, I grew up Christian and into that, but I've been figuring it out myself. So I feel like, you know, I feel like you probably want someone who's already finding their self with God type type deal. Uh, not necessarily. Um, so I'm a Christian recording artist. I'm a Christian man. Um, but my, my debut album is called Coming Into Faith. So it's telling my testimony. Mm -hmm. I was still in the clubs. I was still drinking, smoking, partying. Um, I faced death and stuff like that multiple times. So um, I don't, you know, judge people where they are. You know, uh, we can grow together if that was going to be a thing. You know what I mean? Um, I just wanted somebody who was willing, you know? Yeah, you don't have that. to be like on this high level, like right. super like pastor and this and that. Like, no, absolutely not. Okay, I feel that. He said he just wants a woman who's willing, right? Now, this isn't necessarily going to be related to specifically uh, your faith walk. But I said recently that a masculine man, is he doesn't expect you to be perfect. He doesn't expect you to be necessarily this particular way by this particular time frame. However, a masculine man who's on his P's and Q's, this man right here in particular, he has structure. He's been through the Marine Corps. So more than likely, he's been through some things and possibly have been deployed and been put under conditions that are less than desirable. So he's been through the ringer. So he knows what just trying to get through feels like. So with that being said, again, a masculine man, he doesn't expect you to be perfect. But what he does expect you to do is to put in effort. He said he wants a woman who's willing, who's willing to learn. What does that mean? A woman who listens, a woman who isn't operating in rebellion a lot of these women they operate in rebellion my body my choice you can't tell me what to do ain't no man gonna do this and that pro-choice no i'm not going to practice sexual discipline but i'm going to use baby deletions as a form of birth control that is rebellion Constantly drinking, constantly smoking, avoiding accountability from the consequences of her choices. If I make more than him, then I have more authority than him. Ladies, again, a masculine man, he doesn't expect you to be perfect, but he expects you to respect him. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's going over here. Your name and age and why you ended up popping your balloon. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm 25. Hello. Well, nice to meet you. Nice to meet um, you too. You're really cute. I'm just not a fan of piercings. Oh, that's okay. That's it. I mean, yeah, just piercings. Oh, okay. I'll... Just the piercings? No. I'm sensing a woman who doesn't want to live up to his standards. A woman who doesn't think she can live up to his expectations and standards. Because piercings, babe, do you understand that he can take those off, right? My father used to wear earrings back in the day. But not one day in my life have I actually seen my father with earrings in his ears. He just still had the hole so you can just see them. He still had like, you know, kind of like the scar from the hole. I don't like piercings. That can be changed, boo. Just like that wig and that weave can be taken out. Those nails can be taken off. Those lashes can be taken off. He can simply take the earrings off and put them on the shelf and not put them on anymore. If that's truly something that you don't like and he's willing to change that about himself because you're more important than piercings. Ladies, are you willing to adjust for example, your appearance or certain components about how you carry yourself for the man that you want, for the man that you love. Are you willing to adjust? Are you willing to consider what he likes and doesn't like? Like my husband, y'all, I got a lace front for my 25th birthday a few years ago. And to me, and I got a whole photo shoot done. And to me, I look like a Barbie doll. Okay. I thought I was popping, but my husband, he made it clear that he hated, <laughs> did not like at all that lace front actually it was what was it it wasn't a lace front wig but it was the hair the weave was sewn in and then i had lace i had i had no leave out you know what i'm talking about i don't know the, the proper term so excuse me and it was my first time getting it but he let me know that he hated it and after the dust settled and my photo shoot had passed and once i realized all of the keep up i took that out and i paid 
a pretty chunk of change to get my hair done. I took that out about four, three or four days later because I realized, you know what? I don't hate this, but I prefer my natural hair. It's a lot easier to deal with. And I look more like me because my hair is unique. Ladies, your hair is unique. It's unique to you. When you're wearing that same 1B straight Malaysian gacky or whatever hair, you're walking around looking the same. It's time for authenticity. Y'all think y'all are authentic. Y'all genuine, but it doesn't even display through how you present yourself. Too much makeup, BBLs, lip injections, long lashes, long nails, weaves that don't even look it could possibly match you naturally, and you wear all of the time. There's nothing wrong with wearing weave, in my opinion. There's nothing wrong with it. I understand sometimes, you know, you want to switch up, but th this is your primary look. This man said he is very specific. He's very particular. I'm just speculating, but it seems like to me he probably wants a woman who's natural, who wears her natural hair confidently, and who probably doesn't wear a lot of makeup. Based on the first few girls who we've already seen, the twins, they were wearing a lot of makeup. The other woman, they've had weaves in. The girl in the yellow dress, I liked her dress. It was very cute, very dainty, but he probably didn't like the weave. BBL girl, she's talking about she don't like the piercings. That's so silly. And the young woman with the short hair, she was cute. But I sense that she's still kind of like a little girl on the inside. But anyway, I'm not gonna get too deep into that part, but I'm just saying ladies, stop disqualifying a man by something that can be changed, that can be adjusted. Like, come on. If you don't like the way a man wears his pants, maybe they're too tight or too loose, or you want him to add more pieces to his wardrobe collection, girl, that's so easy. You won't even give this man a chance because he has piercings in his ear. That, that tells me how simple some of y'all are. Stop being so simple. I want a man to dig deep. I want a man to get to know me. I want a man who gets to know my soul, how beautiful I am, but then when you have a possibility of getting to know a man, you disqualify him by what his shoes look like, by him having piercings in his ear, by having a grill in his mouth. Y'all are gonna say single. Y'all have got to get some act right. Pull it together while you're still young. Goodness gracious. Let me keep going. And now she's someone that's your type? Uh, she's very attractive. Um, I know I'm saying a lot of the same things, but uh, at the end of the day, I just still wouldn't approach Um, not anything against you or anything. Like I said, I know what I'm looking for, so. Mm -hmm. But you are very beautiful. I want to let you know that, Thank for you. sure. All right, let's go over here. Your name and age. Hi, I'm Taylor, I'm 22. Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, the reason, I just feel like more like close friends, you know, you're attractive. I like, I like it all, but for sure. yeah, I'm just getting like, we can have like a real good bond. Yeah. <laughs> okay. On the same vibes. Oh, I appreciate the friend. Um, how she said we can be close friends and things like that, but, um, I'm not looking for friends right now. Um, uh, I'm looking for love, you know, somebody to marry and cherish, um, and have kids with and stuff like that. So. Understandable. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go on over here. Hello. Your name and age and why you ended up. Yeah. I'm going through almost every single woman because uh, many women out there, you could find women in real life who are just like this, who say things just like this. I feel like you would be a friend. I think we would have a close bond, but I'm just not feeling it. Y'all think me, my husband and I aren't friends? That we don't have a friendship? Friendship is so important in marriage. In those times when you feel like you don't like this person anymore, when you can't stand him, when you're over it, that is when you dig deep and get back to the foundation of your relationship, which should be God and your friendship. Like, I don't understand what you ladies are wanting. That is how marriage lasts, ladies. Not just love, but also friendship. Can you stand to be around this person? That's friendship. I feel like, I would feel like we have a good bond. That's great. You should have a good bond with your husband. And see, here, here's my thing. How many male friends do you have? Because if you're saying something like that, it causes me to think that you have one, three, five, too many male friends. To where that's the first and only thing that you say is, I think we will be really good friends. You must have some men in the friend zone who possibly you've been with. And he reminds you of them. Like, <sighs> He seems like a solid man. And then another thing, he said, I'm not looking for friends. I'm looking for a wife. I just want, these men out here aren't serious. 
These men don't take me serious. They just want what's in my pants and then I don't receive a phone call. They waste my time. They don't want real commitment. They're unloyal. This, this, and that. And this man made it clear that he's looking for a wife. He's serious. Y'all don't want anything serious. Y'all want some somebody to blow your back out, take you on expensive trips, be toxic here and there, give you money, possibly get you pregnant, make you laugh here and there, bring some weed over, pay for your hair and your nails. And then after maybe six months to a year, he moves on. He ghosts you. That's what you all want. Because I mean, goodness, or is it you don't know what you want? Didn't I say this is sad? Did it pop in your balloon? So my name is Paris. I'm 28. Hi. So I popped my balloon because um, <laughs> I'm an ominous and I don't want it to get to a point where it's just like it becomes forceful in a situation. Like everything you list is cool. Like I'm like a person that um, I'm supportive of everything and everybody and whatever their journeys are. It's just that it's going to always be an issue like in the future. Like when are you going to, you know, come back? And I kind of graduated from religion. So, yeah. Okay. But you is handsome as fuck. Though. I ain't gonna lie. Okay. Good. I appreciate you. You're very beautiful. Uh, I just wanted to say, um, you know, from the bottom of my heart, um, God has saved me from a lot of things. Like I said, I faced death a, a lot of times, and um, He's the only one that brought me through. So I can sing. I have a gift to sing, and I'm very good at it. And so I gave it to the Lord, and He gave it back to me. And He said, "Go reach my people. I'm gonna give you the message to convey. Now go convey. And I'm gonna be an I'm gonna be an obedient child, and I'm gonna do just that." Um, so nothing or no one can detour me from that, but I do appreciate your honesty and being upfront with me. Absolutely, but um, that's just my calling and I don't force that on anybody. I just said, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, let's head back this way. Okay, so that is all the balloons popped, but we do thank you very much for coming on. Let's thank go ahead you. and give it up for ladies. Thank y'all ladies. Thank you. I don't know what you want ladies and neither do the men. Ultimately, I think he's going to find the woman that's perfect for him. Um, and that doesn't mean that she's perfect. But again, that's perfect for him in her flaws and in his flaws. But um, he's still got plenty of time as a man. All of them pop their balloon. And to me, what's sad is when a man comes onto the dating market and states his preferences very clearly in terms of him wanting a woman who's feminine, who's kind, who's willing to learn, who's willing to take instruction and who has a relationship with the most high. And there are, there's a certain standard that he has, like maybe party and drinking, you know, that's not my preference or a woman who always wants to be on the road, traveling, things like that. I don't like that because, you know, maybe that's a red flag to me. Then they're wrong. I'm gonna let you men in on a little secret. Ladies, don't kill me for this, but women hate for a man to know his word. I said, yeah, we don't like that shit. Nigga come around thinking he know his worth. Oh, he too good for this. He too good for that. A man that know his worth ain't gonna let us play with him. And I don't like that. I, me personally, I don't like that. Nigga, I need you to come around not knowing shit. But the minute a woman gets online and says she wants a man to make $100,000 a year and he has to not have kids or and, and he has to take her out on trips and buy her things and, and be a man of God and this and that. When a woman brings out a laundry list of her preferences, of her standards, then she's a band, then she's clapped for, she's applauded. Here's the thing. I'm convinced that a lot of females, they don't want a man. They want a boy. They want a child. They want a simp. They want a man who they can use for his money, but they also want to run him. When she say do, she tells him to jump and he asks how high. That's what they want. But they want him to have some bread though. Ladies, it's time to deprogram yourself. And it's time to get out of this toxic, toxic cycle that you've been in because you've had those same standards for the past few years and you're still coming up short. You're still coming up more broken. You're still coming up more jaded. It's because of your unrealistic, unreasonable, silly standards. So much so to the point where even the perfect man is still not good enough. But that is all I have for you today. The truth has been signed, sealed, and delivered by yours truly. If you like the content you see, then please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my new uploads or when I go live. And if you know of any women who you think would benefit from this information, then please share. And until next time, I will see you in the next one.
Bye-bye.